Our next speaker is Bjorn Faller, a man who will not miss an opportunity to sneak out to his cabin in the woods. Indeed, that's where he writes most of his conference presentations while also doing some DIY carpentry. This is Modern Techniques for Keeping Your Code Dry, presented by Bjorn Faller. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, I don't know if you can see this code. It's a little bit small, maybe. Uh, I don't like that code very much. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. If you sent this to me for, for a code review, I, I wouldn't complain, really. It's, so it, it's, not, it's not bad code. But I don't like it. And the reason I don't like it is this repetition that we have here. It's a, the state equal equal that just keeps coming and coming. Like it, it's like a religious mantra that you just have to repeat. And it doesn't add any information at all. And I find that annoying. Now, I should point out that since the title of this talk is Modern Techniques for Keeping Your Code Dry, I'm talking referring to the dry principles of software design. This is not a violation of the dry principles. This is not a problematic repetition. The, the dry principles are about repeating the same logic in several places throughout your software, which makes it really difficult to make changes because you will forget one of them. This is just me being picky and annoying. So welcome all to this Modern Techniques for Keeping Your Code Dry. I'm Bjorn Faller. I am professionally and avocationally annoyed with code, all code, my code. And uh, the focus on this presentation is techniques. And they are modern in the sense that you will need a reasonably modern compiler to be able to use them. Uh, I'm going to drive this talk with uh, an example that is arguably silly. A few of you will be really annoyed with the silliness of the example. Don't let that d d deter. The techniques presented are useful, in my opinion. So let's get going. We have this example. Assert that state is idle or state is disconnecting or state is disconnected. Um, yeah, um, I work for NetInsight in Stockholm. We do networking. I'm kind of damaged. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned initially, I'm kind of annoyed with this. So, I want to get rid of the repetition. So, one thing that occurred to me is that, can I use a variadic function template to magic away the, this repetition? So, I can write something like this. Uh, is any of that takes a state type that we compare with uh, and uh, a number of values. And uh, I don't know, are you familiar with uh, fold expressions? Like this one. No, anyone not familiar with them? Uh, OK, not many hands, a few. Uh, this came with C17. It's a, a marvelous way of getting rid of annoying repetitions. So what this thing says, this parenthesized expression, says that we have this sub-expression S equals t's, and that is the, the first parameter s and the first t's from the parameter pack. And then we say, logically or them, repeat the same pattern for all the t's in the parameter pack. So th this, is, this is powerful. If before C++17, you had to either do a recursion or some really ugly hacks that I prefer not to mention. There may be children watching on YouTube. Uh, so we can then write code like this. Is any of state idle, disconnecting, disconnected? And this is absolutely terrible code. If you, unlike the, the one that this replaced, I would have some words to you uh, in a code review about this code. And the reason is that it doesn't say anything about what the, what the intent is. What, what are the meanings? Is it state that is compared against the others, or is it state that is compared to idle and the result of that is compared to it? It doesn't say. The only way you can, 
so you, you cannot really guess. The only way you can even have a hunch of what this code means is to read the code. And yeah, sure, it's not a big function, but it, it's, it, it, it replaced something that was easy to understand, although a bit annoying, with something that is not easy to understand and annoying. So that is not a good win. So let's not go there. Although, 8 out of 10 for trying, really. Minus 10 million for the result. So let's try another technique. Uh, Variadic non-type template parameter function template. That is, that is poetry. Uh, so we can write like this. So we have the, the state type now uh, as template parameters. Uh, like these. These are uh, template non-type parameters. Normally, in most templates, you have just uh, uh, all template parameters are types, but here they are actually values of the of the enum type. And then the function body is the uh, fold expression that you've seen before, and we'll see that fold expression a number of times through this talk. So now I can write like this: Is any of idle, disconnect, and disconnected parentheses state? And we can then make this further a little bit more generic, because this function, why should it be only for this state type? C++17 gave us auto for uh, non-type template parameters. So by writing this uh, any of function template like this, now it works for, for all enumeration types. Great win. Less repetition. This is good. But there is... There are drawbacks. Um, not all types can be used uh, as non-type template parameters. So, strings, for example, don't work. Sorry. Uh, and you can only have const expert values. If you want to have in the list of alternatives something that is computed at runtime, sorry, doesn't work. So that is a disadvantage. And then the last one, that's me being picky again. Uh, it's, it's Yoda speak. You know Yoda from Star Wars, right? Yoda very backwards speaks. Uh, it's, uh, I have this thing that I... It's, it's rarely seen in C++ because, well, C++. But, but uh, it makes me happy when I can read a statement or something that sort of reads like English. And this doesn't. This, this reads like Yoda speaks English. It's not a big deal, but it's a bit annoying, I think. So, another example, another try. We, we can construct an object and then test. There, there was sort of a, an informal Twitter competition a few years ago about who, who could make the smallest example of matching uh, one value versus a, a number of others. And uh, this is pretty small. This was when Twitter had a 140 character limit. And I snuck in a Godbolt link also, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, can you see what it does? Twitter is a great IDE. Uh, so th let's clean it up a little bit. So we have a function is in that takes a, a T. And it returns a, a lambda. The auto return type came in C14. That is one of the greatest things that came to C ever. Because now we can, use, can write higher order functions, functions that return functions. Higher order functions may also accept functions uh, as parameters. So when I, in the, this assert, say, assert is in state, that is this lambda. That, uh, that captures t is now the state. And then it's callable with a number of values. So the, this, that's the idle, disconnected, disconnected uh, as the parameters for these. Uh, and then this lambda returns the fold expression that you've seen before. So the good thing is that this works with all types for which the operations make sense. You know, I mean, if you cannot do operator equal equal, it, it won't work anyway. But um, for all types where the operation makes sense, th this works. It looks horrible. It's, it's too terse. It, it, it's lacking information. 
But I think it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. So we can be a little bit more explicit. Um, I can construct a struct is, that is a, a template that has a team member, and a member function, any of. Well, and uh, when you call the any of with uh, a, a parameter pack, it, it gets this uh, fold expression again that you've, you've seen a number of times. And then we add a deduction guide. This is something that came with uh, C++17 that you can uh, deduce the type of a template, uh, a template class from uh, the types of the parameters. Or earlier, you have only been able to, to infer template parameters in function calls, but now you can in, uh, in constructors also. If you're not familiar with that at all, you should really watch these uh, presentations from CppCon, both from last year. Stefan Leverweid about how absolutely awesome CTAD is. And then when you watch that and you're all enthusiastic about how great this thing is, then you watch Timur Doomler, who says it's a trap because C++. But it, actu it actually is great. It's extremely convenient, but there are a few nasty sides that it's, it's good to be aware of. So with this, we can say, is state any of idle, disconnected, and disconnected? This is actually getting somewhere. You can read this. You can understand, e even if you haven't seen this code, if, if, if you just saw this assert you would have a pretty good hunch of what it means. And there's no repetition here. I like this. This is quite good. It's, uh, I don't know, it's not really Yoda speak, but it, 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 it's a little bit awkward. But it, it, it works. It, the reason it doesn't really work is that, that when you read the whole sentence, assert is state any of, then, then it stumbles. If is any state of, uh, it, 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 it's nearly there. So we're getting somewhere. But this is actually not a very important problem. So time passed. I didn't really bother very much, but I was a little bit annoyed, mildly. And then one day, two years later, is this too cute? A lot of people thought it was. I think they're wrong. So yeah, there are a number of lines of unreadable code, but you see the if statement at the bottom. If any of 135 double equal x, then the only reason it doesn't say x equal any of 135 is 240 characters was a little bit too few. So there we are. But this works. We, we can expand it in a more readable way. So we have this uh, the class template any of. I'm super lazy, so I'm using private inheritance from the tuple. The only reason I'm using that instead of having the tuple as, as a member variable, as I probably actually should, is that tuple has 18 constructors. And by private inheritance and saying using std tuple of t's colon colon tuple, I get all those constructors for free. I don't have to write any more code. And I'm lazy, so I do that. It's cheating, maybe, but I do that. And then we in the operator equal equals, you stood apply. So the apply is a lifesaver when it comes to getting rid of repetition, because with apply takes something that is callable and a tuple. And it calls the callable with each of the values from the tuple as a parameter in the call. Unfortunately, here I'm getting sort of the problem that I caused myself by using private inheritance, is that std apply doesn't know that star this is a tuple, so I must do this ugly const cast to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's the tuple I want you to apply. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts, I guess. And then, of course, we want uh, the operator equal equal with uh, just the parameters swapped 
so that we can write more readable code. Um, I mean, th th this is beautiful. Th this makes me unreasonably happy. This is like, assert that state equals any of idle, disconnect, and disconnected. When you talk with a colleague about how this expression should, if this is the correct expression, should it say this or, or not? This is how you say it. You don't say, should we assert that state equal equal idle or state equal equal disconnecting or state, you don't speak that way. You speak this way. And reducing this disconnect between how you as people express yourself and how the code expresses itself makes code more readable and makes code less buggy, in my opinion. But yeah, it, it, I agree, it might be exaggerated, exaggerated cuteness, but I really, really, really like this. Actually, let, let's, let's have a look and see how bonkers this is. So we have our state type, or any of, with the apply operator equals the deduction guide. I have a class C here that has a state type member and a func function. That and I've used the preprocessor to, to be able to see the code generated with the classic expression with the uh, annoying repetition and with the any of construction. So if you can see if I'm highlight, highlighting this code, it's these assembly statements, and these ones are here. I think we can agree that the compiler generated the same code. The only difference is I can see is that here the line number is, is 33, and here the line number is 35, and the, the, the assertion strings differ, but I don't count that as a code generation difference. This is the same code. So the compiler wasn't bothered with this. It generates the same code. It's so there may be a number of reasons for not wanting to write code like this, but fear of performance should not be one of them. So that is cool. Maybe we should add other relational operators, my, maybe not just equal equal, uh, less than, greater than, etc. So I can just add this again, the same thing. And if you look at the, the while loop at the bottom here, is while any of A, B, Z is less than zero, the, this is cool code, I think. We can see if, if this made any difference. It shouldn't. Maybe the compiler has changed since, since I wrote these slides. So we have uh, our operator less than, we have the while loop, and yeah, again, we have identical code generated. So this is not a problem from, from the perspective of the compiler's code generation. But you spot a problem here? I am repeating myself, so I, I set out to solve a, a not really problem, and I created one in the process. Great job. <laughs> and it's worse than it looks like. You have dot, dot, dot there. Dot, dot, dot for operator less equal, or dot, dot, dot for operator greater than, or greater or equal. This is a huge block of repetition. And now you may think, I know. I have followed the standardization process. I can use operator Starship. And I don't think you can. I'm, I'm willing to be proven wrong, but I've tried. And the reason I don't think you can is that we want this uh, fold expression where we would fold over operator Starship uh, and with the logical OR. And I don't think you can do that in a way that makes sense. So. Don't get me wrong, Operator Starship is an amazing addition to C++, but I don't think it applies here. So, yeah, bummer. We should be able to do better, though. So, I write a, 
write a helper function or function template or elements. It takes something callable f and a tuple, and it just applies this to the default expression of, uh, of all the values. So this can be good. So now I can write this code as or elements of uh, this lambda that just does uh, an operator equal equal and store this. And since this function now takes uh, explicitly a, a std tuple by const reference, we don't need the cost. std apply does just takes a, a, a naked t ref ref, so it, it doesn't know what to do with it. But here, here it's on the call site, it does uh, the uh, cost to the base type, so we don't have to do that. Still a little bit repetition, but a lot less. So higher order functions, in this case, uh, or elements that takes an f and the calls it I in this fold expression are also lifesavers when it comes to avoiding repetition. It's uh, extremely powerful. So let's have a look. So that does, this, does this add overhead? We have our or elements, any of that uses or elements. And this while loop. And again, we have identical code being generated. So higher order functions where you compose functions, in this case for, for a fold expression, that the, the, the compiler just sees through it. it, it they are not a problem. So, that was any of. So now I want to do an, an each of that takes the e each of the parameters and checks that it, the expression is true for every one of them. Do I repeat everything again? That's sort of contrary to the whole idea of this presentation. So no, of course I'm not doing that. So, I can change this or elements from being a free function template to being a, a type instead, <coughs> a struct or element that has a member function that does this logical or. And then I devise a, a new intermediate type, opt. Um, Kate Gregory is going to have some stern words with me about my uh, amazingly good naming techniques, uh, but bear with me. So opt takes an operation and the, the t's, and it uses the, the uh, inheritance from tuple, as you've seen before, and it has an operator equals. But the difference is that it calls the op colon colon apply. So for or elements, the apply is the, this function that does the, the fold over logical or. So our any of now becomes op t of or elements and t's. We have another new ugly repetition here. Okay, I got, a, got ahead of myself. L let's do the and elements and uh, each of. It's not a lot code changed to achieve that. And elements with logical and in the fold expression, each of using a and elements. A little repetition because it's C++, there's, uh, we must unfortunately do some boilerplate, but it's not bad. And here, in a better world, we would be able to have the uh, deduction guide on uh, on the type alias, but we can't. But actually, Timur Dumner says we can from C++ 20 and forward. Uh, I haven't checked what the what the syntax for that looks like, so I haven't dared to put it up uh, as an example. But I, I, I take his word for it because he's the one who wrote the paper. So it, 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 it's probably correct. So again, j just to have a brief look, see if is this is this still, still okay? We have and elements apply opt each of with uh, opt while each of abc is less than zero compared to the traditional loop. Yeah. The compiler is still with us, good. Still the same code. Good. So 
So, questions so far? You were using Clang in these examples? Does this also work with GCC? Generates the same code or? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, maybe I should mention this. Uh, it's a habit of mine in uh, presentations that I use use Clang and I use libc++. This is not because Clang and libc++ is better. It's because it generates code that is easier for me to explain uh, for, for reasons that I don't know. I haven't compared them. Uh, GCC generates, uh, it's not identical code, but it's uh, sort of the same. Uh, there were questions uh, over there too. I wonder how many average programmers, average C++ programmers that works like every day in every company could understand the code you, you wrote? Oh, <laughs> define average. Um, five, I, I, five years after university. Yeah. yeah. It, it depends, it's really the answer, it depends. Uh, I, I, know, I know people with 40 years experience who don't understand it. I know people who are still in university who write far better code, so. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, from, uh, it's a very odd example, right? so you can, uh, put there like in a very generic code, you can easily call it with like a thousand arguments. And from what I've seen, I think you can do any of something less than any of something else and it will work. So you have thousand arguments times thousands arguments yeah. and, and, and it won't be efficient. So this is what I'm annoyed about. Uh, you're right, but there is a but here. Um, write the same code that, that has the same logic without these constructions. How much better is that? <laughs> well, you would uh, find the smallest uh, element in one, so that's like uh, an oh, element. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. And I, then I, I, max I, yeah, yep, yep. I, I get where you're, you're going. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, I'm not. That's what I've, why I said in, in the introduction. Uh, I'm driving this with an example that is somewhat silly. And this is silly. Uh, I agree that it is silly. The, the important bits to, to take with you is uh, how to use fold expressions, how to use higher order functions, and, and uh, how to use std apply and all these, because they save you so much work, and use functional composition. So this is the example to drive it, and it's, it's, it's not a panacea. It's not the universal solution to all problems. It's a solution for a number of problems. So there, there is another one uh, in this, and that is this works really well when all the values you want to compare with are, uh, are, are known. If you have a, a lazy evaluation situation where one of them is expensive to compute, but it will rarely actually happen, then this is a, a big performance penalty because you always have to compute all of them. Right. I think I'll go on. Actually, I won't do uh, anything else. I will do the same thing again, but I really think lambdas are cool. So we I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, but in a different way. So here is a tuple. Can you see that this is a tuple? It's not a very good tuple, but it is a tuple. So you call tuple with uh, a number of parameters. They are captured in a lambda. You can call this lambda with a function. The function can return the first element, the last element, the number of elements, whatever. It's a tuple. It's a terrible tuple. It's most definitely not a standard tuple, but it's a tuple. So let's use it. So when I call tuple of ABC, I get this lambda that has captured now ABC as the, the t's. And then I call it with uh, this lambda. 
that takes a number of parameters and does this fold expression that you've seen. So this will now call a greater than zero and b greater than zero and c greater than zero. And then we can add another function, the and elements. It's the same as we've seen before, but it, it's turned inside out. So and element takes a function, returns a lambda that takes a number of parameters, and then calls the result of, of the, the fold of calling the function with each of the elements, logically anded together. So in this case, we now have a much smaller lambda that just compares is e greater than zero, and this gets as func in and elements, and this whole and elements of this is the parameter to, to the lambda, or to, to the tuple, sorry. So this again reads a greater than zero and b greater than zero and z greater than zero. And then we can add another thing. So the standard library in C20 comes with uh, a higher order function stood, stood bind front. It takes a callable and it takes a number of parameters and it returns uh, a lambda or something that is callable, which has bound the function and the and its parameters. Uh, and when you call it, it, it will call this function with the bound parameters and the rest of the parameters that you, you add to it. Uh, for the sake of brevity in this presentation, I'm cheating and doing a bind right hand where I'm assuming that function is a binary function that just takes two parameters because generalizing this is actually quite messy. So I won't bore you with that. So then I can create a greater than that takes a value and we return the result of bind right hand side of stood greater with RH. So if I'm calling greater than with five, I get something that is callable with the value LH and returns whether LH is greater than five or not. So that is cool. This is useful. Functional composition. Keep that in mind. So now I can write tuple ABC called with and elements greater than zero. We're getting somewhere. Where and elements greater than zero is now this thing that is passed on to, to, to the tuple. So again, this reads A greater than zero and B greater than zero and C greater than zero. So with these, we have at the top, we have tuple and elements equal to, greater than, what have you. We modify the opt a little bit. So it takes a function and a tuple as its parameter. So when we call each of ABC, it returns a result of opt constructed with and elements and a tuple of the, of the values. And the constructor takes a callable and a tuple and stores them as the, the member variables. And when we call greater than, it, it calls apply greater than. Apply is this function here that calls the tuple with func, func was and elements, greater than zero. Are you with me? It's a, a lot of indirections here. Uh, the, the, Nitpicky detail. Uh, in, uh, there is a, a rule in the language regarding types that objects that are not related to one another must have a unique address, even if the object doesn't contain anything. And this means that func here, which is often not necessarily uh, empty, doesn't have any state, uh, would take at least a byte, and then you get uh, also padding issues, so it, it might be larger than that. But C20 introduces this no unique address attribute, where you can say to the compiler, actually, I don't need a unique address for this one. It, it, it's OK. And then it, it, if it has zero size, it, it, it won't take up any space. Uh, 
And if you ha actually do have members, then it works the way it, it normally would. Uh, before C++ 20, if it is important to save this, you can use uh, private inheritance to get the empty base class optimization, but it's uh, a little bit messy, I think. So I'm, I'm glad for this one. I, I, it's a tiny detail, it's not really important. And I really like this code. This, 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 this nerd heart is beating now. Uh, because not only is the assert easy to read, e assert each of ABC greater than zero, that is easy to read. It's also, f I think, fairly easy to read the implementations, uh, apply greater than T for the greater than operator, etc. And it's not a heck of a lot of repetition. So I think this is reasonably good. Let's have a look. I have modified this example a little bit, but we have we have our terrible tuple, we have or function. Ah, doing last minute changes to two slides. It should be what did I call it? All exp or, or expressions? Oh, whatever. Uh, bind right hand equal to less than or op t any of. So I have a function that returns the position of the first white space in a string, or minus one if there wasn't one. So I write, find if in the range of s begin to s then a character that is equal to any of tab, line feed, character return, or space. And if it doesn't find any, we return minus one, otherwise the, the distance. I like this code because it expresses what we want. We want to find a position that it, with a character that is equal to any of tab, line feed, carriage return, or space. I don't have to fiddle with uh, implementation details of how do I actually find these, what, what do they mean. It, it just says what, it doesn't say how. And if we look at the Implementation. Let's see, what does it do? Are you familiar with uh, x86-64 assembly language? Better than me, most are. Uh, this example is actually not that very difficult. So we get rex from rdi. We check if it's zero, then, yeah, then we jump to the end and return. So yeah, so rdi must be the, no, R rsi must be the length of the string, yeah. So in an empty string, there is no first white space, so we return minus one. Yeah, sure, good. Uh, a really big value. Okay, well we can return to that one. Uh, get rdx and rax, yeah, okay, so R rax is what we read a, a byte from, so RSI, yeah, that, that must be the pointer to, to the beginning of the string, yeah? Sure, compare it with 32. And if it is before or equal, we go to four. Otherwise, we get to the next character, read it, uh, and loop over. Yeah, sure, good. Uh, and here we do a bit test of what was R8. R8 was this big value, yeah, okay. So if this bit is not set, then we continue looping, otherwise we return. Okay, so this bit is obviously important. Are you seeing what this is? Is that a must for those characters? Yes, that is exactly what it is. Th this is a constant uh, th that has the, the bits 9, 10, 13, and 32 set. So if you know your ASCII table, you know that tab is 9, line feed is 10, character return is 13, and space is 32. So the compiler has seen that yeah, all these constants actually fit in, in, in 164 bit value as a bit test. So instead of doing individual comparisons and logical OR, it just does all these checks in one instruction with a bit test. Compilers are pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, 
I, when I prepared this example, I couldn't believe my eyes when I read this code. <laughs> because I, first, when I saw this big number, I thought, yeah, th this is NPOS, obviously. And then I said, no, it, it actually, it cannot possibly be NPOS. What is this? So yeah, th this blew my mind. Compilers are pretty amazing. So again, you may have a number of reasons for not wanting to write code like this, but fear of performance should not be one of those reasons. All right? Uh, th th this makes the nerd in me very happy. Uh, sorry, but we have some things to improve. This is, this is good, but uh, we're not there yet. Const expert, const expert all the things. Always. It's good. How do we do that? Well, actually, all we need to do is apply a few const expert to these member functions because from C17 and later, lambdas are const expert by default if they can be, so we don't have to do anything. So, done. Easy. Good. Perfect forwarding. You may have noticed that I, I copied values everywhere. That is not a problem when, th when there are essentially ints, wi which they have been in my examples, but for some other types, it, it, there is a cost there. And conditional no except. I haven't s stated anything about whether or not these functions can throw exceptions, and by telling the compiler that I know that this cannot possibly throw, the compiler can sometimes generate uh, far more efficient code. And explicit return type. Uh, this uh, is something that can... It, it is mostly used for really ugly Svenai trickery, but uh, honestly there is an another reason to, be to, to want to have this, and th this is to short-circuit the template error message spew that we're so used to seeing. So I'll get back to that in a very short while, explaining why this actually helps. So let's look at perfect forwarding. So we have our AND elements, which returns this lambda. And what we can do is, of course, I accept func by a forwarding reference and capture it with stood forward. Personally, I'm not really happy about having a lot of decal types in my code. It's, it's not a big deal, but it, it's ugly, I think. Uh, C++20 gives us even weirder lambda syntax, where we can explicitly state the data template types in the list. Uh, it's really debatable whether it's useful here, but it, it can be good to know. So then I can just write stood forward of t instead of this decal type. I'm not really sure that was a win, but why not? And then we get to the tuple where we want to save all the, the t's. And here we get into trouble. For C++11, we don't have to bother because it doesn't have uh, auto for lambdas anyway. Uh, but from 14 and 17, there is no way to do forwarding on capture of parameter packs. There is no syntax for it. Now, we could forward things into a std tuple that we capture, but that is kind of daft, because we're implementing a tuple, and a much worse one than std tuple. So implementing a bad tuple in terms of std tuple is not brilliant, I think. So th th this is not doable. Sorry. C20 to the rescue, even more weird syntax. Dot 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 t's equals stood forward decal type of t's. I have no idea why the dots uh, ended up on the left hand side there. <laughs> but that's the way the syntax looks. Don't shoot the messenger, okay? Now we can do, I mean, it's ugly, but now we can do a perfect four in capture, so that is good. And again, we can use the, if we want to, the, uh, the explicit template parameter types in, instead of the decal type. So, uh, okay, we have something. And then we add a bunch of moves and forwards uh, and uh, type names and uh, what have you. And I'm not very happy about this. The, 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 the code used to be clean. It's cluttered now. 
It's not terrible, but it's cluttered. And I don't have any solution. Sorry. But it gets worse. Don't worry, it gets worse. Conditional no accept. So um, what we do here is we want to say that calling this lambda is no accept is if the expression that it evaluates is no accept. So we write like this. So the outer no accept takes a, a true or false and saying no accept true, yes, this function is no accept, or no accept false, no, this function may throw exceptions. And the inner no accept is uh, a compile time predicate that checks the expression. So no accept parentheses funks of t's checks. Is funks of t's no accept? If it is, then it is true, and then this whole uh, lambda expression is, is also no accept. And on the second one, with calling func or on the fold expression, then yes, you do need double parentheses because the no accept compile time predicate must have a parenthesized expression and uh, a fold expression must ex itself also be parenthesized. So, uh, ugly. I just hate this repetition. <laughs> I just hate this repetition. Oh, it's so bad. And then we add some more of these. You begin to see a pattern, I guess. Yeah, but don't worry, it gets worse. It gets worse, a lot worse. So, explicit return type. So, what we can say that I instead of just in inferring what the return type is uh, from calling the func, we can say, yeah, the, the return type is actually decal type of the func. And this may seem bizarre, but this actually shortens uh, and shortens compilation error messages and makes them easier to to get to what the problem actually is. Because without this, if this if this doesn't compile, you you get a message saying that operator equal equal between string and int doesn't compile somewhere in some function that you didn't know existed, and then you have to, to sort of do a detective work to figure out where was the actual problem that I'm trying to find. But when saying this, no, the return type is the, the decal type of calling this function, then this uh, Svenai thing comes in and it says, oh, okay, I cannot call func of t's. Th that would be a compilation error. So this function does not exist. So the error message is, I could not find a, a function to, to call for your parameters because operator equal equal does not exist between int and string. Great. So you have actually gained a lot by doing this. Uh, and the same thing for, uh, for and elements with, with this function, with the, the double parentheses and everything. Yay. Macros. Yes, macros. Excellent. Have you watched his talk? Watch Vittorio Romeo's uh, talk from uh, CPB Now a couple of years ago, uh, titled You Must Type It Three Times. I guess you can figure out why. Where he asked the obvious question, why can't the compiler do this for us? Because it can. The, the compiler actually has all the information. And yes, he does show uh, the, the, a macro solution. It is not very difficult to write one. But for Christ's sake, write a macro. Oh. This nerd heart is not beating very happily right now. Uh, sorry. So, this is a problem. And this is a problem in the language as it is. And the language is evolving, but I don't think that there is any solution to this uh, on its way. And with that, I'm pretty much done. That was Modern Techniques for Keeping Your Code Dry. I'm Bjorn Faller. Remember, full expressions are awesome. They are. Stood tuple and stood apply is awesome, because it saves you a lot of repetition by calling a function with things you have captured in a tuple. Higher order functions are awesome, with functional composition. Uh, can create an enormous expressiveness and get rid of a lot of repetition. This is really, really useful, extremely powerful. Lambdas are awesome. 
in general, regardless of how you use it. And C++ 20 lambdas are awesome. -er. And compilers are awesome. And Matt Godbolt is awesome because you would not have believed how good the code would be generated if I hadn't been able to show you, right? And the no acceptance FINA return type is all full. <laughs> Actually, the functionality is awesome, but, but damn. <laughs> we, we should be able to get something better. And sweating, the small, sweating the small stuff makes you annoyed, sorry, but it can lead to pretty neat code, I think. Keep your code dry. Thank you. Thank you, Bjorn. We have a good 10 minutes for questions. Okay, so I'm happy to start the queue. Uh, my first question is whether uh, you think that concepts or uh, template constraints could help with uh, better catching of errors because I have used codes that looked only just halfway you wrote and when something didn't went right then boy the error message was worse than you know writing it but maybe uh, what was my my solution but it was a simple problem was to insert all those you know is base of or is mm -hmm. comparable and all this stuff you know template uh, basically tem template restrictions on on the types. Uh, so that's the question. And uh, one comment about the macro solution, you know, killing kittens is not hard, but somehow we don't do it because it's unethical. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, strictly speaking, not a question. Um, yeah, uh, I agree uh, on uh, all accounts. Uh, I don't have enough experience with uh, um, Concepts, thank you, my brain blacked out. Uh, I don't have an enough experience with uh, concepts to to be able to give uh, any kind of authoritative answer, but uh, I believe you are absolutely correct th that concepts will uh, help uh, getting better, uh, not just getting a better compilation error messages, but also guiding the user to see wh what parameters are actually expected here. What, what should we get? And also, don't forget concepts on the return type to say wh what, what, is, what can we expect of the thing that, that we got back. So I believe that concepts will save at least some of this, um, but I don't have enough experience to say okay. for sure. Uh, you, you haven't tried uh, the templates that are already there just for the sake of it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I understand the question. Uh, because uh, uh, today you can uh, you can also put on some constraints, uh, you know, with unnamed mm -hmm. template arguments, stuff like that. It yep. still helps with errors. So yep. have you play with that to yes. uh, help the users? Yes. Uh, th personally, I, I think that it's always better to try to name things that, that you use. So, it's a, to first and foremost, try to th see if there is a standardized uh, concept th that applies uh, and use that. Uh, and if not, create a new one by composing existing, uh, existing ones. And as a last resort, you can use requires, but it's probably better to use these requires to, to write a new concept, I think. But like I said, I, I don't have enough experience to, to, to say very to say anything very authoritative. Thank you. And then new question. Uh, I know that we don't have enum class uh, uh, method inside, so we cannot call state dot any and mm. write custom function, but there is an idea of adding epoch to uh, the language. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to do that to save the C++ because with that it, it we may end up, you know, in very hard way. Yes. Position. Yes, I, I, uh, I disagree and I agree in that order. Uh, I, 
I disagree with the idea of adding a dot uh, whatever member functions to the enum. Uh, th actually, there may be good reasons for doing that, but not in, in this context that I showed today. But epochs, yeah, it's... It, 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 uh, I, I think it's a good idea, probably. Yeah. Uh, should get Vittoria here to, to talk about them. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? I don't see any more questions. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, it seems to me that mm, maybe having variant and tuple as a language construct would simplify things a lot in this. Uh, it's just intuition. Yes, and I think your intuition is correct, but it's also my intuition. I have no knowledge. Okay, so so maybe in the future, if we go that way, uh, this yeah. kind of... D you can argue that my t uh, horrible tuple was a language level tuple, <laughs> but it's a horrible one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs>